Oh, Char I didn't even see them over there. Hello, oh. fellers. <laughs> Larry, Larry. Yeah. Larry. Is that like Pete and Ray Pete? Just blood to 
yet to report the results of his last tax scan. The smaller tumor has shrunk. The other tumor that he has is just a hair bigger, but they didn't know if it was just swelled or it's actually growing. It's just it's not much difference in it. So we're hoping that the latter uh, is just swelled. We pray for Brother Charter, remember Brother Larry, uh, Brother Kelly Perry. Uh, last time I talked to him, I could have him twice since Sunday. Uh, he has double pneumonia. So he's really in, in need of our prayer. So keep him in, in prayer. Uh, also, uh, uh, Sister Dot, let's remember her. He'll find to give her for her a chair, special chair, I think, to, to give her her radiation. So remember that. And uh, Sister Jean. Has an infection that God needs to touch. And then Sister April's fire, you don't know if she's back in uh, Carlson. With the more blood clots in her arms, in her neck, in her chest, in her heart. Uh, only thing they can do is give a different try to dissolve all the blood clots. So, uh, anyhow, pray for her. She's pretty discouraged. Has any other school be? Yeah. Do one thing. Right after another, all year long. For so. my sister,
not be prayer for one another.
said to me, I said, absolutely, it's my goal. I don't care. But, you know, I just feel like they need to wake up. I'm ashamed of them. You know, uh, my cue should be full because uh, it was up to being very mature our children with the earth, our grandchildren with the earth. And I keep on them every day. I think it's our job as parents to make sure that you know, their kids know that if they're not serving the Lord, they're going to go to hell. He'll screw the, the, the lukewarm Christians right now. So, you know, my kids all clean. They're clean. Uh, my mama knows something. my kids. Remember Jack and Michelle, too. Those are my partners. Yeah. Pray for my, my, my aunt's name's Rose, Mary, and she's down in Portsmouth in the hospital in the Mediterranean down there. She's in the city here, and she's not been very good. And again, she had a had cancer had and she's got three kids. 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 And she's got she doesn't want to take care of them. So pray, pray, for, pray for that situation. They're all in the state. Let's open her face with this morning. Take care of you. Don't get on one person home in the hospital. Amen. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, God, we are not going to be able to take the questions. We are not going to be able to take the questions.
we'll have a testimony. I've had this on my mind all day, and I guess I'll just say it is my testimony. You know, there's a lot we we do. Um, a lot of times we'll meet people and we won't um, won't have a clue that we've said something that's touched their heart or said something that has inspired them in some way, but. No matter what your day brings, we just need to keep on trying. Because God will use you if you'll be willing and if you'll let Him. And I'm glad tonight that I'm a child of the King. I'm trying to travel the path that is straight. Each day brings me closer to that beautiful gate. Where I lay down my burdens and receive a bright crown forever to live in that heavenly land. I've got a longing, I'm homesick to go to a land without heartache, no trouble. So there's nothing but trouble in this world below. I'm homesick for heaven, got a longing to go. When I prayed my last prayer and sung my last song, and the death angel whispers. It's time to go home Then it's goodbye to friends That I met on my way But I'll see you again On that homecoming day I've got a longing I'm homesick to go To a land without no troubles or woe. There's nothing but trouble in this world below. I'm homesick for heaven, got a longing to go. When I see my Savior who saves me from sin, and I hear him sweet voice as he welcomes me in. Then I want to see mother. She's been gone for so long. But I'll see her waiting to welcome me home. I've got a longing. I'm homesick. Who saved me from sin And I hear his sweet voice As he welcomes me in Then I want to see mother She's been gone for so long She said she'd be waiting To welcome me home I'm homesick.
to go to a land without heartache, no troubles or woe. There's nothing but trouble in this world below. I'm homesick for heaven, got a longing to go.
in and out of jail. My average trip in jail was once every three to four months. Just a couple odd days here and there. That's about the routine of my life. This job, that job, this job. Uh, 2014, I found my way in jail for six months. That's a long time, Chris Little, for jail for six months today. Uh, I've been there doing what I had to. Uh, my wife informed me she moved to Kentucky with her family, take the kids with her. Okay, I agree to that. I did my little term there in jail. Stayed phone contact my wife. Got out of jail. I was not leaving. I was not going go nowhere. You know, probation, drug class, and so on. Uh, Take my time doing all this, drug classes, maintain my sobriety. Uh, move away the drug class. I don't know if you guys have plugged with transportation around this town, but RPA buses. I don't know if any of you know what that is, plug transportation, drive money, and get down the road. Anywho, uh, talk to my wife, and I tell something, something different, something wrong, something's going on. And uh, get my little drug counseling class there, and uh, get a little text on her phone. She says she wants to report. I can't blame the woman. I can't. Remote centers at this time, point in time. Uh, I'm just sober. That's all I got. She says she wants to report. She got another man. Hey, I got mad, but then got mad. Yeah. See, that's the Lord lined things up for me. He sure did. And I know it's a weird way to put it. Thank you, mm -hmm. So he was lining things up for me, yeah. Brother Daniel. Says there in that Bible, broken heart and tried spirit. I have already, you know, I, I was gaining on that broken heart, gaining on that contrite spirit, being locked up in jail. I get out of jail. I have no wife. I have no children. I have a great uncle. He's passed away, being called the preacher, which be, his daughter be my aunt. That's the only home I had to go to was the preacher's daughter's house. <laughs> the only drug free facility. Boy, well, I knocked. He said, you stay here as long as you need to. I sure did. Taking my class, and anyway, I get that little text from that phone that says, hey, I... Got me another fellow who runs the horse. Hey, you guys, man, I got him on that bus. Hey, I just want to go get high, brother James. This is where God stepped in. People right. want to see the miracles. You know, they want to see the big miracles. Hey, let me tell you what happened, brother James. Hey, you guys, off to get high, and I was, hey, I was going to do it. Now, phone rang. Another elder, aunt and uncle of mine, called, and I ain't talked to him in years. How I got my number, ain't got no clue. Some of you come to cut our grass. I grow up. You respect your elders. Yeah, I'll be right there. I thought, I'd get off of this bus. I'll walk to your house. But I know a drug house in between where I'm at and your house. I'll get my drugs, come and cut the grass. That's what I thought, Brother James. Pull up that bus stop. What do I know? That little elder man, he's out there in the car waiting on me. That's cool. <laughs> so I got mad. I got furious. But I got plans. I got plans. I got this feeling in my gut. I, you know, I want to get rid of this feeling in my wife. Uh, go over there, I can't get the lawnmower out. I'll probably butcher that grass all in pieces. So I got to think to myself, I'll put the lawnmower up, I'll walk back to the other side of town, but I'll hit a drug house on my way. That's my thought. Him being an elder man, Christian, elder man, honey, I'll take you home and sit and eat dinner. All this, I had to go through it all, and you had to take me back home. Once I got back home to the preacher's daughter's house, now I'm stuck, I can't get high. And I remember saying to myself, Lord, you're a funny man. You're a funny man. I remember saying them words. Next morning was a Saturday, Saturday morning. They had come by, I got up, was living with their brother James. They got up and said, we're going to the grocery store. You want to go? Nope, I'm going to go get high as soon as you leave. <laughs> now, this is what I thought I was going to do. They left. They had gone three, four minutes. I hit that door. Beautiful day outside. Hey, man, it was a beautiful <laughs> day outside, hey. I walked not even three blocks, Brother Jamie, and it coming down for me, Brother Jamie. Hey, right then and there, I knew it. I could not deny it, Brother Jamie. The Lord was watching me, and I knew He was watching me. Hey, man, from that day forward, that little bitty coastal church down the road, they didn't have maybe 12 in the whole congregation. Hey, man, I started it going. I started it going. I was still a sinner, but I knew what I felt there, Jamie. I knew what I was getting. You know, He, he was molding me up, Brother Jamie. Mold me up to make me something. Mold me up to make me a husband, a fit father, Brother Jamie. Now, me and my wife, we continue talking. We've got kids involved in this. Told her the path I was going to ride a ride. Well, she knew the old man. She knew the old man. But he had died out, Jamie. So, how am I going to prove that the new man moved in? To, you know, my wife's in Kentucky. I'm in Ohio, Brother Jamie. How am I going to prove this? So, we decided we'd come down there for two weeks. 
come down there in two weeks, things got taught, you know, because she just knew old drug addict, all she knew. A real young Christian, didn't know much about nothing, I mean, sure did. Got taught, but she, she decided, a week or two later, she, she'd take me back in. Now, the old devil, he comes at me every now and then about my marriage and that woman, but let me testify. Hey, I started going to church down there in Kentucky. Got some knowledge in the Lord. I come home, read the Bible, take my kids with me every Sunday, Brother Jamie. That makes a man feel like a man, Brother Jamie. You get to take three young ones to hear the word, to hear the gospel, Brother Jamie. It's just like what was talking about. You know, that's our job, Brother Jamie. But the warfare with the woman. Oh, man. Did it come? But let me tell you what. What happened? Hey, the Lord come by and give you an increase of the seeds out of soul, Brother Jamie. And my wife accepted Jesus, Brother Jamie. What I got in my heart, and I love you. I think that's my rock. That's what a testimony is. Is what God has done for you. Amen. I'm gonna sing this song. I've requested to sing it a while back, and we didn't. I'm gonna sing this for someone I love.
keep me safe and all things there too. And I love that. And I want to respond. Thank God for saving this little boy's soul. So good to me. Thank God for you for a good day. Amen. Somebody else. All right, let's turn to Matthew. We're still in chapter 27. We finished up last week, if I remember right, that Peter had just denied Christ. And those words in that song says, I too, like old Peter, broken down by sin. Scripture says Peter went out and he wept bitterly. Why? He had that broken heart and a contrite spirit. Brother Charlie was talking about there in his testimony. Uh, our life would be a shamble today had we not met Jesus. Amen? Amen. We'd be lost and on our way to hell. We're already there. We're already there. We stopped at chapter uh, or chapter 27 verse 9, right? Yes. We went down as far as verse 9 last time. Right. So we will start at verse 10 uh, or verse 11, I'm sorry, verse 11. And Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. Now, I want you to picture this. A man that's bruised and beaten already. Tied probably with his hands either in front of him or hand behind him back like a common criminal. Uh, possibly, you know, the, the high priest, they, they wouldn't come in where Pilate was. They didn't want to contaminate themselves because of the Passover. Uh, that was getting ready to take place. So uh, they, they stayed outside and the pilot you know, would go out and he would listen to them and he'd come back in and talk to Jesus and he did that the whole time. And backwards and forth as he's going through, through all this. And uh, no doubt he's been outside. He's listened to their accusations or he has read the accusation written on a piece of paper from the high priest, signed and sealed by the high priest, one or the other. Uh, that's not told us, but because it starts out as Jesus stands here before him. He's there, and he asks him the question, Art thou the king of the Jews? Uh, had to be the accusation that, you know, the, the Romans knew that they could not, or I'm not sorry, sorry, but the Sanhedrin court and the high priest, all the, those guys knew that they couldn't send him before Pilate and say, this fellow claims to be the Son of God, therefore kill him. That's not going to work. So what they've got to do is to drum up charges and say, this fellow says he is the king of the Jews. And no doubt Pilate reads that. And as he reads that, he looks at Jesus and asks him the question, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, Thou sayest. Now, my question to you is, what kind of answer is that? And if we would put it in our modern day terms, you said that, not me. Right, Jim? That would be, if we would write it in, in our modern day words, you said that, not me. Thou sayest. I didn't claim to be that. Ain't that what he's saying? I didn't claim to be that. Alright, verse 12. And when he was accused of the chief priests and the elders, he answered, what's that next word? Why didn't he speak up? How many of you in here, all right, 
We got Dave sitting right here here and accusing Johnny of something that Johnny didn't do. Johnny, you just going to sit there and take that? How many of us would? <laughs> now, let's be honest about it. Deb, I know better than our Deb, all right? And you're married to John. I see that. <laughs> she don't take no more off anybody, does she, John? <laughs> huh? Shrek. Does she shrink? <laughs> so, but... You understand, that, that's, that's our nature on the inside is to defend ourselves when we're falsely accused. Why would Jesus stand there and say nothing? Plan salvation. To fulfill the prophecy yep. that was written of him. Remember, as a lamb led to the slaughter, as a sheep is dumb before the shears, yet he opened not his mouth. Now, I realize here that he, he told Pilate, thou sayest. He, he, he did nothing to defend himself. He spoke at two times to Pilate. Number one is thou sayest. And uh, another time he told Pilate, he said, you know, you've got no power or authority over me except it's given you of my father. It's not actually, I don't think that's recorded uh, here in this in this version of it. Nope, it's not recorded here in this. So uh, all Matthew records is these two words that he speaks up and says, Thou sayest. He gets accused, then said Pilate unto him, Hearest how the many things they witness against thee? Notice this phrase here. See how many things they're accusing you of. That's what this means. They're witnessing against you. How many things they're accusing you of. Again, we would be up in arms ourselves. Yeah. Number one, if we'd go back to the garden, we'd say, how many swords do you got before the garden? And Jesus, P Peter said, well, Lord, we've got two. He said, well, that'll be enough. <laughs> we, we'd have wanted an army, right? Understand this. Victory was not won on the cross. Victory was won in the garden. Victory was displayed on the cross and the empty tomb. But the battle was won in the garden when he prayed three times, Thy will be done. All right? Uh, and he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. I mean, it would puzzle me. Here, here is a man that is, they're trying to condemn him to death, to suffer the most inhumane death that any individual could ever suffer was crucifixion. I, I, you've heard me say it. Crucifixion is something that could last for minutes or something that can last for days. Depends on how much they wanted you to suffer. How, what kind of a public example. That, if they had a lot of people to kill, I'm telling you, I don't need a cross to kill you with, with crucifixion. All I've got to do is grab your arms and stretch them behind your back and pull and hold them in place. And I'm telling you, in a matter of minutes, you'll be collapsed and dead because you can't breathe. If these muscles right here are not allowed to expand and contract and allow that air to escape and uh, bad air come out if you have it and good air go into your lungs, you're in trouble. Right? Now at the feast of the at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. In other words, he was supposed to. He was a, it was a custom that they would release. And they had a noble prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pontius said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas? Or Jesus, which is called Christ. Jesus, which is called Christ. Somewhere in all those accusations, 
The truth comes out that Jesus actually said when, when, when He asked him, are you the Son of God or not? Tell us plainly. And He said, I am. And that the Son of God, that, 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 that word Christ, somewhere that come out. Do whom will you have? Will you have Barabbas or Jesus whom is called Christ? The anointed one of God is what that word Christ means. By the way, what are you called? Amen. Christian. Christians, which has a two phrase, twofold meaning. Number one, Christ like. And if we, if we are Christ like, that means that you are anointed or sent by God. Yes. Isn't that amazing? You didn't know that, did you? You was anointed and sent by God. That's why uh, in the fullness of time, God sent forth His Son, born of a virgin, firstborn son. Everyone in here that's a child of God is a firstborn. According to the, the Bible called him the uh, general assembly of the firstborn. That's what he called him on the gym. Uh, in, uh, was it uh, Romans? No. Uh, anyhow, it's in the New Testament. We'll get to it. Or already have actually have covered because we've covered all the New Testament, but the four Gospels, and we've almost got Matthew knocked out. Uh, for he knew that for envy they had delivered them him. Boy, there's a phrase. Paul Pilate saw right through their schemes. Right through their jealousy. Remember the old saying, be sure your sin will find you out? They're found out right here. That's, that is, that's scripture. Be sure your sin will find you out. But these fellows are not only found out by God, the governor of the land can see what they're doing here. If we go back, if, if we would go back, I think it's actually in John chapter 11, they said, look, the whole world's gone after him now. We've lost all of our congregation. Nobody's following us anymore. They're all following him. That's what they meant by that saying, look, now the whole world's gone after him. Remember how these guys made their livelihood. They were politicians. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sounds about like some of them today, don't it? <laughs> Sell out the good and choose the bad. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. What a story within the story right here. Pilate's wife, that knew, no doubt, probably had heard. I mean, I'm telling you, Anybody that raises the dead and opens the eyes of the blind and makes the lame to walk and loses the dumb, buddy, word's going to get around about you. You've got a reputation in the community around about from the palace all the way down. And I'm telling you, somewhere along the line, I think Pilate had heard about Jesus. We know Herod had, right? Because uh, it's not in here again, it's in... Uh, Luke, if I remember right, that he sent to Herod, and Herod, you know, all Herod wanted was uh, for him to do some miracles in front of him, make fun of him and whatever, but uh, here, note this wife, don't have anything to do with this just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. In other words, I've had a vision about him, leave him alone. Now, there's warning number two. What do you mean warning number two? Warning number one is his conscience is telling him this man's innocent. Now, if an innocent man is standing in front of you and you have the power to put him to death or to set him free and you know beyond the shadow of a doubt he's innocent, are you going to crucify him? Nope. I like to think I wouldn't. That's exactly right. 
Alright? But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. And the chief priests and the elders, notice that, and the chief priests and the elders, how do you think they persuaded the people? I think it's a lot like what's going on today. I think they bribed him. How do you think they found the false witnesses against him? They bribed him. By the way, do you know how the, the, the chief priest got the office of chief priest? He bought it. I mean, it was for sale to the highest bidder. At this time, and that's how corrupt this religious system is right now. It is, it is, it's, it's all about the money. It's all about the politics. Well, that's almost true today because the one that, that spends the most on advertisements and publicity and stuff running their campaign gets a lot of the votes. No, notice how, how bad they slander one another until after the election and then they're sitting at the table, buddy's buddy. And they ain't fit to run around with before, they before that. Alright, uh, anyhow. And the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will you that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. He's already asked him once and he kind of ignores it Ignores the crowd, ignores the mob as they're crying, "Give us Jesus or give us Barabbas and crucify Jesus." And he asked this question the second time: "Which one, fellas? Whither of the twain that I release unto you?" And they said, "Barabbas." And Pilate said unto them, "What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ?" And they, they all. There's a three-letter word for you. And they all, they all say unto him, Let him be crucified. I'm going to tell you, whether you're guilty, whether you're innocent, when you get a mob in an uproar, people that you have never known will hate you. There's an evil spirit that will come upon them people. You hear me? And it passes when they get involved in that and they listen and allow their heart to come in here. How many people here do you really think know who Jesus was? All of them probably. They should how many really thought knew what his accusation was? Now, listen what Paul is saying. Over here, I've got a fellow that was, that is, he was caught. He is guilty of murder and sedition. Alright? He's a, he, I mean, he's a traitor. He killed, I mean, he had killed soldiers. Over here stands a man called Jesus, which is called the Christ. That's his, that's the worst thing they could come up with is his, he was called the Christ. And they chose a murderer over someone that God had sent. Now, I know, I know it's the plan of God. But again, look at our world today. Look at the millions of babies, uh, some 60 million babies since Roe versus Wade. In America alone, 60 million babies since Roe versus Wade. Who's speaking up for them? What are those babies guilty of? So we, we, we're no better. Our country is no better than the mob that crucified Christ. We spend millions of dollars to... to, uh, to Prove whether or not a man is guilty before he goes to the death chamber. 
15 to 20 to 30 years. It stay after stay after stay. But yet that innocent child dies every day, every second. This country's messed up. <laughs> Jamie, how long before this time was it that some thought he might be Elias or some thought he might be Moses, come from the dead, come back to life? How long him it? neither. Him neither. That's John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Right? So that's at least three and a half years ahead of this. Jesus has had 33 and a half years of ministry. That was John before Jesus actually came forth into his public ministry. They asked him, are you, are you Elias or one of the other prophets that have risen from the dead? He said, I'm neither. I'm the forerunner. I'm the one that was sent to tell you that he, I'm not worthy to lose his shoes, but he's out there among you. He's coming. But didn't Christ ask one of the apostles, um, who do... Who do men say that I the Son of Man am? Yeah. He said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some say thou art lying, some say thou art one of the other prophets. Yeah. But who do you say the son of, I the Son of Man am? Yeah. You, again, the miracles that he done. Yeah. Now, we have, there's another thing we've got to take in consideration here, alright? Number one, he's not in Galilee. Jesus never spent a lot of his three and a half year ministry in the city of Jerusalem. Most of it was spent in Galilee and Nazareth and going backwards forth in all those cities around there. And he did have a, he would come up to the feast of the Passover. Uh, he did that once. Actually, before this time, the last time before it, he did. And he said, No, nah, I'm not going this time. He said, When I go, I'm going to die. You know, but he never spent a lot of time in Jerusalem. And at this time, Jewish males from all over the world were commanded to come to Jerusalem to offer up sacrifice. Even though there was no sacrifice to be offered up, the sacrificial system wasn't being allowed to be carried out by, by the high priest because they were under Roman rule. Yeah, but my, my thought, my point was going to be this. They could believe that Elias would come back from the dead or that Moses could come back from the dead and walk on the earth but they couldn't believe that the son of God could come from heaven and walk on the earth it was prophesied that he here, here's the problem alright how many of these do you have in your home a bunch I mean how many we got Rhonda eight or ten Jim how many you got three or four Joe five John, how many of you and Deb gotten home? We've got quite a few. Quite a few. Dave, several. I've got Larry? Them. Brother, this was wore out, but it's my friend. This is the closest. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, my, I've got a Thompson chain reference that's identical to this one. This one is a new one, about three years old. Uh, and uh, my other one, it, it's wore out, falling apart. I seem like I can find things faster in it <laughs> than what I can in this one, even though this is the same. I mean, it's, it's the identical. It's just, uh, uh, but I'm trying to use this one. What, my, what I'm trying to say when I ask that question is, is they didn't have copies. In order for them to hear the Word of God, they had to go to the synagogue. The problem with going to the synagogue at that time, instead of getting up and reading the Pentateuch, reading the Psalms, reading the prophets, they would get up and they would read the traditions of the elders. They didn't read from the Word of God. They didn't teach the Word of God. Yeah. I realized there was a few, uh, like when John the Baptist was born, there was Zachariah and there was the prophets, prophetess Anna that was there that was you know, waiting for the consolation of Israel. I realize there all, God's always had His remnant. But as a whole, you, we've got to remember that the, the people that were supposed to be leading people to God were leading people to the bank, their bank, taking their money and putting it in their bank. You understand? I mean, this was a business to them. It wasn't, it wasn't God's house. This was their house. This was their, this was their property. This was their money. I mean, it was all about them. God was being left out. That's why Jesus had to come. All right? 
Again, but, I mean, I realize it was not possible that blood bulls and goats could take away a man's sin. I know that. But the religious system was so corrupt, they weren't leading. If, if the Jewish had been reading the books like they should, teaching the books like they should, remember for 400 years there was that silence between uh, Malachi and between Matthew, or, or whichever one was written first, between the, 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 verse, the visit unto Zechariah. There's 400 years of silence. Silence, a space of silence in there. I can't speak plainly. But what I'm saying is, it is there was nobody was looking for God. When they should have been looking for Jesus, remember this. This is what the Bible says about the second coming of Christ. In an hour you think not, behold, the Son of Man cometh. That's exactly what happened here. The second part is, we also have to remember that God in part, not as a whole, God in part blinded the nation of Israel that they wouldn't see who He was. Amen. I mean, you and I are sitting here looking at it like, how could they not know? God blinded their heart. What did... Uh, Let's understand this about God blinding their heart, all right? The reason God blinded their heart, their hearts were dark. Their hearts were wicked. They, it's, I, nowhere will you ever find in the Word of God someone that's truly seeking God will God blind them and turn them away. That's why God blinds him. God won't do that. He said, if you search for me, I'll let you find me. I mean, not exactly in those words, but it's real close to that. I will be found of you. He that searcheth with me all of his heart will shall be found of me. I think is how it's worded. But these people were not looking or hoping. Only thing that they were looking for is set, get us away from the Romans. Set us free. Get us away from the taxes. Get away from the persecution. Let us be us by ourselves. Take care of ourselves. That's all they wanted. Brother James? Yes, sir. They had, uh, they had Isaiah chapter 53 to read in the Bible. And they had it. Yeah, but you know, how could someone read that and not know that was a prophecy of Christ coming? You know, they, they, they sugarcoated it and made it something else. Well, if you read that chapter, you'll see that it's, it's plain as the nose on your face. But, prophesying about Christ. I, I agree. But remember, they were blinded by their, if you will have it, they were blinded by their own heart. Uh, again, you how many remember the saying or, or, or know the saying, love is blind. Right? Well, <laughs> greed is too. All greed sees is I want more and more and more and if something is taken away from me, get it out of my way that I can get more. And that's what's going on. They wanted him out of the way regardless of what it took to get rid of him. Go ahead, brother. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money, not money. The love of money is the root of all evil. She's got to go to work. <laughs> She, Joe, Joe says, I owe to owe, so off to work you go, right, Joe? <laughs> hey, Joe, you going to be a go getter? Take her to work and then go get her? <laughs> All right. Do, do pray for Joe, but you, you understand where I'm, where I'm going at with this? Oh, look, it's, a, it's three, three minutes to three. My watch is right on time, ain't it? What in the world time is it? 25 after 8. I never even, never even looked when I put the watch on. It just done quit. <laughs> no, it's three minutes to three. So, yeah, it's not five to three. So we got plenty of time, right? <laughs> we finished the whole book. Uh, 
They all yelled to let him be crucified. Like, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more. Notice here, what, why? Why should I crucify this man? They all cried the more, saying, let him be crucified. Wow. Let's stop right there. What do you think? Because Pilate's making a decision. And we will, you know, it, that's just a good place to stop before we get into the crucifixion because it's, it's right at hand right here. Only thing I can tell you is, is when I read the crucifixion, my heart hurts. Because He loved me, my Savior died. On a cross was crucified. No greater love by a mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise His dear name. I love Him so. Amen. So let's, let's stop right there. Uh, again, I, I, there's a lot of sick. I don't know about you that's on Facebook, how your Facebook page is, but it seems like every time Every morning when I get up and look, there's all kinds of prayer requests. When I come back in from working or get a check on lunch, either whichever it is, all kinds of prayer requests, different ones. Uh, a lot of sickness going on in our land today. A lot of cancer, a lot of heartache. Uh, just, just be much in prayer for not only ours, but everybody else's as well. Continue to pray for Vicky's sister. Pray for Andrea and James. All these right here.